This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the fairly large Samsung Infuse 4G for AT&T. This is a 4.5-inch display here, and it's Super AMOLED+. Plus Plus means it has a new sub-pixel matrix. It got rid of the pentile matrix, and that means basically sharper, finer detail and less blooming of colors. It is simply an awesome display with nearly Disney-like colors, as you can see here. It's super-duper vibrant. This is going to be available for $199 with a contract, and it's running Android 2.2 Froyo with Samsung's TouchWiz 3.0 software. Obviously, it's a fairly large phone with a 4.5-inch display, but that said, it's, it's not as huge as you might think. Let's compare it to the Dell Streak, the 5-inch Dell Streak that's available for AT&T, which gets you a half an inch more display viewing area. And as you can see, the Dell Streak is got a more of a tablet kind of design to it, but it's huge even compared to the 4.5 inch Samsung. AT&T and Samsung are billing this as the thinnest 4G phone in the United States. There's always some category that a phone can be the thinnest in or the best in, and yeah, it is really, really thin, especially compared to something like the Droid Charge, just coming out soon on Verizon, much thicker, 4.3 inch display here, and this guy has LTE, but certainly not a slim phone, whereas this one is nearly impossibly thin. It's also incredibly light. It weighs 4.9 ounces, despite the big size. I picked up the box, and I thought the phone must not be in the box because it felt so light. That, of course, is because Samsung loves plastics, and we often complain about the plasticky, shiny look of the phone, and in this case, I'm not complaining. The front face of Never had a problem with that. And the sides are this kind of gunmetal silver, so they don't really show the fingerprints that they're picking up very much. And the back has a matte plastic finish here. So it doesn't show fingerprints, and it's not slippery. It makes it much easier to hold. And you've got that little bit of a hump back there that helps stop the phone from slipping out of your hand as well. It's 8.9 millimeters thin at the thinner part, and 9.24 millimeters at the little chin down here. Power button is right here, typical for Samsung. This is your headphone jack up here. Volume controls are on this side. And you've got your micro USB at the bottom. And there is no HDMI port, but the phone can do HDMI out. And it comes with this bizarro little adapter over here that plugs into the micro USB port. And you have to plug the charger in over here. Apparently it needs power. And then you've got a standard HDMI out, which is nice. You don't have to go searching for micro HDMI cables, that kind of thing. So it can now put HDMI in. This is in the box, so you can do it. Also, there's a stereo headset in the box, a charger, and USB cable. In terms of processing performance, this is a 1.2 gigahertz ARM Cortex A8 family CPU, a Hummingbird single core CPU. It is not dual core. Of course, dual core plus 4.5 inches would probably mean ouch for the battery life, so we're not complaining. This has a 750 milliamp battery, that's quite a high capacity battery, and that's under this door that peels off. You just kind of yank and pretend you're not worried about breaking it because it won't break. It's very flexible, and you got the SIM card slot here, and this is your 750 milliamp battery. Battery life, therefore, is pretty good. Now let's talk about that 4G thing, which is a slippery topic with AT&T since they keep redefining 4G downwards for things like the HP VR 4G, for example. This guy, this really is true 4G HSPA plus 4G at least. It's 21 megabits per second full HSPA plus with HSUPA for upload fast data. You can see we've got a little plus symbol up here and AT&T has updated the backhaul in our region and we're seeing between 6 and 8 meg download speeds and about 1 meg on speedtest.net, which is very good and is actually a little bit better than T-Mobile. Of course, T-Mobile has a lot more HSPA plus handsets on its network so that they're fractionating their service a bit more whereas this, this service here is pretty much available only on data sticks on AT&T. So we're pretty impressed with that, and we're glad to see something we can really say, yeah, this is definitely a form of 4G here. It's not going to be as fast as LTE, but it's still very fast. The phone does support Wi-Fi tethering, and you can just turn that on your wireless options. Of course, it has Wi-Fi 802.11, BGN, Bluetooth, and the usual GPS. So you can see this is a stand standard Samsung TouchWiz interface over here, and very vibrant colors on the standard wallpaper that it comes with, and we've got some shortcuts here. This one we've got shortcuts to uh, Media Hub for Samsung's Media Hub service. You can 
buy or rent TV shows or movies, and you get a $25 credit in the box if you're one of the first, I think it's 500,000 folks who buy this phone. And we've got some AT&T apps. Now, AT&T didn't go too overboard with bloatware here, happily, but we do have the inescapable Yellow Pages mobile over here, AT&T Family Locator, which you family folks just might appreciate, AT&T Navigator, which is a $10 a month pay-for-service powered by Telenav, for those of you who think that Google Maps and navigation just aren't good enough for you. AT&T has its own barcode scanner here. That's pretty useful. We're not going to complain about that. They preloaded Angry Birds. Again, nobody's going to complain about that one either. We, ha we don't see any of the usual driving games that have been bundled lately, like Asphalt or Need for Speed on here. Of course, you can download games from the Android market. We've got All Share for DLNA sharing over here, a standard full suite of Google applications. You've got Gallery, you've got uh, News, Weather, Google Search, all that good stuff, Maps and Navigation. We've got Live TV here, which is uh, AT&T's UVerse TV service. Unfortunately, we have this phone several days before it's been released, and the service is not yet up and running for this phone. We have used it on other phones from AT&T that do support the service, and it's pretty pleasant experience, and it costs about $10 a month also. We've got Samsung's Mini, Mini Diary app here, which you've probably seen if you've looked at the Samsung Captivate. File Manager. We've downloaded Quick Video, which does work on this, so we notice our own voice is feeding back if we use the built-in speaker and mic rather than using a headset, but it does work because this has a 1.3 megapixel front-facing camera for video chat. Camera on the back is 8 megapixel, can shoot 720p video, takes really nice photos. Samsung's high-end phones just really do a nice job with taking pictures. Good colors, very good exposure, not much white out in bright scenes. And we've got Right to Go. Again, that's one of Samsung's value-added applications. Quick Office is on here for working with Office files. We've got Video Player, custom video player on here as well, and the usual YouTube player. Since this is running Froyo, it has Flash on it, and it's Flash 10.2 is the latest version currently. Flash performance is pretty good. We're going to take a look at that in a minute when we look at the web browser. First, we're going to take a look at the video player, though. Certainly a fantastic screen for looking at video. This makes things almost look better than they really are. And this is an 800 by 480 over a meg per second bitrate video. So that's pretty pretty good quality. There's no problem playing it. Speaker is reasonably good on this. What's this all about though? Yeah, man, why'd you drag us halfway around? Pretty loud there. It's just a little bit over halfway and it was quite loud. If you max that it will distort some. That's a stealth mission. We'll be in and out before they even know we're there. We're talking about breaking into a police station. At 4.5 inches and 800 by 480 resolution, this makes an awesome pocket video player. Given the screen size, we wouldn't have minded if Samsung had upped the resolution higher the way Motorola's been doing for some of their actually smaller display phones, but hey, we're not complaining too much. It's fine, and text is quite readable and all that kind of thing. Let's take the web browser next. And this is over AT&T's network right now. We do not have Wi-Fi turned on. And we'll check out our site and we'll look at some flash video playback. And you can see here there's a symbol to download flash. They ship the phone by default to load flash on demand. If you do have flash always turned on, I, you will notice some lagging sometimes of page loads as it tries to download a whole bunch of flash banner ads from websites. Got your pinch zooming here, very fast and responsive. And the phone score is about 1187 on Quadrant, which is pretty good. It's not going to compete with those dual cores, but experientially the phone feels certainly fast enough for anything other than trying to load full flash and many banner ads on a, on a web page. In Linpack, it does about 18. Uh, Samsung processors don't always do the best on benchmarks. It's a strange thing, but despite their very good performance, particularly for Power VR 540 graphics and things like that. So we're going to take a look at a video now in flash format.
Phone ships with three keyboards, by the way. There's the Samsung keyboard, the standard Android keyboard, and Swipe. And there's our Flash video. We'll tap on it to download it. And we'll full screen it as soon as it's ready. It's doing fine. In fact, let's visit the full, full YouTube site. Pick something a little more action oriented. And we'll pick some soccer. And again, this is over AT&T's network, not over Wi-Fi. So there we have YouTube playback. Pretty good for a single core CPU. The phone can also play DivX. We've got a 720p DivX trailer right here. Happens to be super saturated, so the colors are just insane. And we'll also take a look at a 1080p trailer, this is MPEG-4 format, and we tried this out to our HD TV using a little HDMI adapter, and it did well. In fact, funny thing is it did better than the Acer Iconia A500 tablet that we tried the same trailer on and really had no luck playing whatsoever. It's not like you'd probably want to watch 1080p on, on this size screen since it doesn't really have that resolution, but it's a good option for outputting to the TV, and it did play well. There's a lot of fast cuts, so you can see the frame rates are keeping it pretty well. So 1080p, not bad for a single core 1.2 gigahertz CPU. I'm satisfied. In terms of Samsung software, for those of you who aren't familiar with TouchWiz, we've got a collection of uh, custom widgets. You've got many home screens that are extended here. Here's the calendar widget, which is just standard for Android now. And we've got Samsung's mini diary widget over here, so you can plop down a picture, put a comment, stuff like that, get the weather information at the time. And here we've got their social networking widget over here, which handles Twitter, MySpace, and Facebook. And you can set the refresh interval for that, and then you've got space to add even more. Samsung enhances the music player a bit, a little bit less drab perhaps than the standard Android right here. If album art's available, you'll see it. The rest of the software on this is pretty much standard Android. You've got a messaging app that has a nice threaded bubble view, for example, and giant screen phone dialer here, and you've got links to your favorites, call log, and contacts, of course. And this is what the contact view looks like. 
let's just take a quick look at the camera interface here. You can switch between front and rear cameras, but I don't really have anything for you to look at right here, but immense viewfinder, and we'll switch over to looking at the cat here who's hiding his face. Ah, good morning cat. And you can tap over there, and then you have your controls here for the flash and for exposure and resolution. Autofocus mode, you've got standard autofocus, macro mode, and face detection mode. Don't know if face detection mode works with cats, however. So that's the camera interface. Again, it takes really nice pictures, too. And if you want to switch to video mode, you just tap up there and switch over. As you can see, we're shooting at 720 by 480. Maximum resolution is 1280 by 720. Not a Tegra 2, so you don't get any 1080 video recording here. But 720 video is quite nice. Of course, this needs to make phone calls, too. And call quality is good on this. It's not super duper good. Certainly not terrible. It's good middle of the road call quality. And reception is also pretty good. Not quite as good as my Dell Streak, which has amazing antenna on it, but typically it's within about 4 dB signal strength of the Dell, just a little bit weaker. And data transfer speeds on this twice as fast as the Dell easily, if you're in HSPA plus area. And supposedly AT&T has about a third of the United States covered with that now, and they plan to extend their backhaul to two-thirds by the end of the year. Do another quick comparison to Samsung's other high-end phone. And that would be the Droid Charge on Verizon. This guy also has a Super AMOLED Plus display. Same resolution, 800 by 480, but it's 4.3 inches. Personally, I think that the Infuse 4G has a slightly sharper looking, more color accurate display, but you know, that could just be the difference in manufacturing between two units. Certainly I would say it's a bit more attractive. This is a slightly oddball design and kind of thick, but then again, it does have LTE. And now I'll compare it to the LG G2X on T-Mobile, which is one of T-Mobile's very high-end phones. This guy has a 4-inch display, and it's, it's IPS display, which is also very lovely, but as you can see, it's not as super wow with the oversaturated colors like the Samsung is. And obviously it's a bit smaller. It's a 4-inch display versus 4.5-inch. And you can see the difference in size in the phones, which actually isn't that bad. So that's the Samsung Infuse 4G on AT&T, 199 with contract, available May 15th. It's a really nice phone, and if, if you don't mind a big phone in your pocket, you're certainly living large with this fantastic 4.5-inch vivid Super AMOLED Plus display and 1.2 gigahertz CPU and 16 gigs of internal storage, no slouch either. Oh, and AT&T throws in a whopping 2 gig card as well, but you don't need that much storage given how much you've got built into the phone. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Visit our website for the full review.